Welcome back to the Peony Patterns YouTube channel. My name is Ashley and I'm the Sew Along host here at Peony Patterns. Today we are going to be sewing the beautiful violet dress together. Violet is a sweet knit dress or a cute peplum top that has a gorgeous statement back feature. The tiered skirt, which is a flattering combination of both a circle skirt and gathered tiers, also has an optional tulle overlay for that extra wow factor. There will be timestamps in the description box of this video if you would like to skip ahead to any particular parts of the construction of the violet dress. I'd like to say a massive thank you to So Much Fabric for sponsoring the Violet Sew Along and also for gifting us the gorgeous floral fabric that I will be using to sew my violet dress with throughout the sew along. We are now going to jump straight in and see all of the pattern pieces that I have cut and prepared for my violet dress, then we will begin sewing. So here are all of my pattern pieces cut and prepared for my violet dress. Firstly, I have cut two front bodice pieces. They are both cut on the fold and I have one of those in my main fabric and the other in my lining. Then I have cut four strap pieces. So I've cut two of those in my main fabric and two in my lining and each of those are a mirror image set of each other. I then have cut two back waistband pieces on the fold. Again, one is in my main fabric and the other is in my lining. Then I have cut two top tier circle skirt pieces. They are cut on the fold and I have cut those in my main fabric. Now, if you are making the peplum top, you will only have to cut both of the top tier circle skirt pieces and that is all for the skirt. If you are making the tiered skirt, you will need to cut two of those, plus also your four bottom tier gathered skirt pieces. Now, if you are also planning on adding the optional tulle overlay, you will also need to then cut two top tier circle skirt pieces on the fold, as well as four bottom tier gathered skirt pieces using your chosen tulle. So that is everything that I have cut and prepared, ready to then begin sewing. Now to begin the construction of our violet dresses, we are firstly going to be working on our straps. So before we actually begin the construction of our straps, this first step is optional but is definitely recommended and that is to stabilize one set of our straps with a strip of fusible interfacing. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this to the wrong side of my lining pieces, making sure that you've also cut your interfacing to be a mirror image set as well. So I have already gone ahead and cut my two strips of interfacing and I have cut those to be the same size as my straps, but with approximately three eighths of an inch to spare around the entire perimeter. So we are going to be applying these to the wrong side of one of our mirror image sets of our straps. So either our lining or our main pieces, but making sure that we have cut our interfacing to be a mirror image set of each other as well. And that we are applying this to the wrong side of our fabric. So I'm going to go ahead now and press this in place to the wrong sides of my lining fabrics. Once you have then pressed your fusible interfacing in place to the wrong side of one of your mirror image sets, now we are going to take our strap pieces and begin constructing those. So taking one of our main strap pieces and one of our lining pieces, we are going to be placing those right sides together, aligning the raw edges, and then we are going to be pinning along those long curved edges. So that is now one of our straps pinned together. So I have my lining fabric and my main fabric pinned right sides together. We are then going to repeat those exact same steps with our second set of straps. Thank you. 
once pinned we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a stretch stitch to now sew where we have pinned so we are only going to be sewing along these long raw curved edges and leaving the two short straight ends unsewn once you've then finished sewing both of your straps we are then going to trim these seam allowances down to a quarter of an inch and clip those curves or alternatively pinking shears can be used once we have then trimmed those seam allowances we are then going to turn our straps out the right way Once we have then turned our straps out the right way, we are then going to give them a press. Once you have then finished pressing your straps, we can now pop those aside. Now we are going to be constructing the back waistband. So I have both my back waistband pieces here, my main and my lining. We are going to be placing those right sides together aligning the raw edges and we are going to be pinning those together along the top raw edge. Once pinned we are then going to head to the sewing machine using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a stretch stitch to sew where we have pinned. Once sewn we are then going to also finish that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have then sewn both of your back waistband pieces together and have also finished that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, then the next step is optional and that is now adding clear elastic to your back waistband piece. So if you would like to go ahead with that step, we are now going to separate our two waistband pieces away from each other and press that seam now towards our waistband lining piece. Now we are going to take our clear elastic and pre-stretch it. Then we are going to take a piece that is the same width as our back waistband and we are going to be aligning that with that seam line. So we are now going to sew and attach our clear elastic to our seam allowance and our back waistband lining piece using either a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch through the center of our clear elastic. Once you have then gone ahead and attached your clear elastic in place to that seam allowance and also the back waistband lining piece, this is now what that will look like. So now we are going to take our back waistband piece, whether we attach that clear elastic or not. So if you chose to not go ahead with that step, you can jump back in now. And we are going to be folding our waistband back in half so that the wrong sides of our fabric are now facing each other. And we are going to press that on a low heat. Now we are going to be working with our front bodice main piece. So I have my front bodice main piece here, right sides up. We are then going to take our back waistband piece that we have just created and now place it so that our main fabrics are now facing towards each other. We are going to be aligning that long bottom raw edge of our waistband with our bottom raw edge of our bodice and also aligning those side raw edges together as well. We are then going to pin our back waistband to our front bodice at those side raw edges. Once pinned we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and a basting stitch to now baste our back waistband in place along those raw side edges of our front bodice. Once you have then basted your back waistband in place, now we are going to introduce both of our straps that we created earlier. So we are going to be placing the straps right sides together with our front bodice main piece so that our main fabrics are now facing each other. 
Now the wider part of the strap is the bottom of the strap and the short part is for the top of the strap which will be aligning with that shoulder raw edge. So we are positioning the straps so that they sit just above our back waistband there and are aligning those with the side raw edge and we are going to pin those in place. So I've just pinned the bottom of one of my straps in place along that raw side edge. It is positioned just above my back waistband there. And then the top of that strap finishes 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom of my arm's eye. We are now going to be positioning the short raw top edge of our strap in the center of the corresponding shoulder. And we are going to pin that in place as well. So that is one of our straps now pinned. We're going to repeat those exact same steps for our second strap. So place it right sides together, position it just above our back waistband and align it with that side raw edge and begin pinning. Once again, you should have three eighths of an inch between the top of your strap and the bottom of your arm's eye. We are then going to position the top of our strap in the center of the corresponding shoulder and pin that in place as well. We are now going to head back to the sewing machine to now baste our straps in place where we have pinned using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once you have then finished basting your straps in place along the top shoulders and also the side raw edges, we are now going to take our bodice lining piece and place it now right sides together with our front bodice main. Now sandwiching our straps and our back waistband in between. We are then going to align those around the neckline, shoulders, arms, eyes and the side raw edges and pin in all of those areas as well. Once you have then finished pinning your bodice lining and main fabric together, sandwiching your straps and your waistband in between, we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a stretch stitch to sew around the entire bodice where we have pinned with the exception of the bottom raw edge here that we have not pinned. So I'm going to go ahead and sew mine now and then we'll be back with the next steps. Once you have then finished attaching your bodice lining to your bodice main around those areas that we had pinned, we are then going to clip the corners, so on our shoulders and also where our arm's eye meets our side seams. Then we are also going to trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch and clip the curves or alternatively, pinking shears can be used. Making sure that when you are doing this, that you do not cut through any stitching at all. Once you have then trimmed those seam allowances and clipped your corners, we are then going to turn our bodice out the right way. Once turned out the right way, we are then going to give it a press on a low heat setting. Once you have then pressed your bodice, the next step is optional and that is now basting our main and lining fabrics together around the bottom raw edge of our bodice. If you would like, and if you are planning on adding the clear elastic to your waistband, you can also go ahead and attach that at this step as well. So if you are wanting to go ahead with that step, we will basically just be aligning the bottom raw edge of our lining and the bottom raw edge of our main fabrics. We will then be heading to our sewing machine and basting those in place using a quarter of an inch seam allowance around the entire bottom raw edge of our bodice. If you would also like to go ahead and add the optional clear elastic to your waistline of your dress, we can do that at this step as well. 
So clear elastic can be added to the waistline of knit dresses just to add some stability. So if you are wanting to add clear elastic, we will simply be cutting a length of elastic that is slightly larger than the circumference of our bodice. We will then be pre-stretching the elastic and then now turning our bodice out the wrong way, we will then attach the elastic so that the bottom edge of our elastic aligns with the bottom raw edge of our bodice along the lining side. Then starting at one of the side seams, we'll begin sewing that in place using either a zigzag stitch or an overlocker, making sure to sew through all layers. So we are sewing through our clear elastic as well as our lining fabric and our main fabric. So I'm going to go ahead now and attach my clear elastic to that bottom raw edge of my bodice, making sure that we are adding that to the right side of our lining. If you have decided to go ahead with that optional step of either basting your main and lining fabrics together or also going ahead and attaching the clear elastic, then this is now what that will look like. So as you can see, I have the clear elastic along the bottom raw edge of my bodice the whole entire way around and I have used a zigzag stitch to now hold that in place. So now that that is done, you are now looking at your completed violet bodice. Now we are going to be constructing our violet skirts. So to start off with, we are going to be firstly working on our circle skirts. So this will either be the peplum top skirt or this will be the top tier of the tiered skirt. So I have one of my circle skirt pieces here facing right sides up. We are then going to take our second one, placing it so that they are facing right sides together. We are then going to align those at the straight raw side edges and pin both of those. Now is also an ideal time to add in any care and size labels as well. So I have gone ahead and added mine. Now we are going to go ahead to the sewing machine using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a stretch stitch to now sew those side seams where we have pinned. We will then also be finishing off both raw edges using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have then finished attaching your two circle skirt pieces together at those side raw edges and then I've also finished those with an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, then if you are making the peplum top, you can skip ahead using the timestamps in the description box of this video to then go ahead and hem your peplum top. Or if you're making the tiered skirt, you can continue watching and we will now be constructing our bottom tier of our violet skirt. Now we are going to be constructing our bottom tier of our skirt. So I have my four bottom tier pieces here. We are going to be only working on two of those to begin with. Now we are going to be taking these two bottom tier pieces and placing those right sides together and aligning one of these short raw side edges and pinning. Once pinned, we are now going to take the opposite end of one of those pieces that we have not pinned and flip it over so that we are now looking at the right side of that fabric now. Now taking another one of our bottom tier skirt pieces, we are going to now place it right sides together with that one that we have just folded back on itself and align those two at one of the short raw side ends on each of those and then pin. So we now have three of our four bottom tier skirt pieces pinned together. We are now going to take that one that we just pinned and fold it back on top of itself. So we are now looking at the right side of that and we have the open unpinned end here. And then take our fourth and final bottom tier piece, pin and place it right sides together, aligning them at the short raw side edges and we are going to pin those in place. So 
So now that you have all four bottom tier skirt pieces pinned, you will now have one continuous length of fabric now all pinned together. We are now going to close those now to create a loop of fabric by now taking our two remaining unpinned ends and aligning those together, making sure that once again they are right sides together and we are going to pin those together as well. So now that you have finished pinning all four bottom tier skirt pieces together at those side raw edges, you will now have one continuous loop of fabric. We are now going to head to the sewing machine to sew where we have pinned using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a stretch stitch. Once sewn, we will also be finishing off all four of those raw edges using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have then finished attaching all four of your bottom tier skirt pieces together and have also finished those raw edges using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, then we are going to press all of those seams towards one side. Once you have now finished pressing all of those seams towards one side, we are now going to begin the hemming process of our skirt. So the following steps will be the exact same whether you are making the tiered skirt or the peplum top. So we are now going to be working along the bottom raw edge of our skirts and we are going to be using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch to be now finishing off the entire bottom raw edge of our skirts, making sure to not trim off any fabric whilst doing so. So if you are making the tiered skirt, you will be now doing this step on your bottom tier. If you are making the peplum top, you will now be finishing the bottom raw edge of your circle skirt. Once you have then finished off the entire bottom raw edge of your skirt, we are now going to press the bottom edge over towards the wrong side of the fabric by half an inch. This step will be the exact same again, whether you're making the tiered skirt or the peplum top. For the peplum top though, because it is a circle skirt, you may find it helpful to actually start off by firstly using a basting stitch with a half an inch seam allowance along now the bottom finished edge of your skirt and then you can use that stitch line as a guide when pressing up your hem. But now no matter what skirt version you are making we are going to be folding over the bottom edge of our skirt towards the wrong side of the fabric by half an inch and pressing the entire way around. Once you have then finished pressing your hem up in place by half an inch, you can then go ahead and pop a few pins in just to hold that in place. Now we are going to head to the sewing machine where we will now sew our hem in place, either using a stretch stitch, twin needle or a cover stitch machine. So I'm going to go ahead now and sew my hem in place along the bottom edge of my skirt. Then we'll be back with the next steps. So I have just gone ahead and used a twin needle to now hem at the bottom of my skirt. So if you are making the peplum top version, you would have now completed the construction of your skirt now that you have hemmed it. If you are making the tiered skirt version, however, we are going to continue by now gathering and attaching our bottom tier to our circle skirt top tier. So to now gather the bottom tier, we are going to be sewing two rows of gathering stitches along the entire top raw edge of our bottom tier. The first row will be a quarter of an inch away from this top raw edge. Then the second row will be three eighths of an inch away from that first initial row of gathering stitches. So I'm going to go ahead now to sew my two rows of gathering stitches around that entire top raw edge of our bottom tier. Then we'll come back with the next steps. Once you have then finished sewing your two rows of gathering stitches along the entire top raw edge of your bottom tier, then we are going to pop that aside and now bring back our top tier or our circle skirt. We are then going to be marking the center front and center back of our top tier circle skirt along that bottom raw edge. So you can go ahead and do this by using either pins or an air erasable marker. So I'm simply just aligning side seam to side seam, 
to then find my center front and center back. Then I'm going to use an erasable marker to pop a line at both of those points. Now that we have marked our center front and center back, our two side seams will now work as our two other quarter points to now split our circle skirt up into four equal parts to now attach our bottom tier to. So now working with our top tier circle skirt right sides facing up towards us, we are now going to take our bottom tier and place it so that it is facing right sides together with our top tier. And I'm going to start by aligning one of my seams on my bottom tier with one of the seams on my top tier and pinning. Then we are going to move on to our second seam on our bottom tier. And we are now going to align that with one of those center front or center back marks that we have created just before on our top tier and pin. Then moving on to the next side seam on our bottom tier and aligning that with the second side seam on our top tier and pinning. And then take our final side seam on our bottom tier and we are going to align that with that second center point that we marked on our top tier and pin. Now, before proceeding, we do want to make sure that we have not twisted any of our bottom tier as we have pinned that on in those areas. Once we have double checked that, we are now going to gather our bottom tier to be the same circumference as our top tier. Once you have then finished gathering your skirt to be the same circumference as your top tier, we are then going to evenly distribute our gathers between those quarter points and continue pinning our bottom tier to our top tier. Once we have then finished distributing those gathers evenly between those quarter points and we have now pinned our bottom tier to our top tier by aligning the top raw edge of our bottom tier to the bottom raw edge of our top tier, we are now going to head to the sewing machine to sew and attach our two tiers together using a stretch stitch and a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once sewn, we are then also going to finish off that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. Once you have then attached your bottom tier to your top tier and you've also finished off that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, you can then go ahead and remove any gathering stitches. Then we are going to press the seam allowance up towards our circle skirt top tier using a low heat setting. Once you have then pressed that seam allowance up towards the top tier circle skirt, then the next step is optional and that is to now top stitch that seam allowance up in place using a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now to show you what that will look like if you do decide to go ahead with that step. Once you have then top stitched that seam allowance up in place towards the top tier circle skirt, then you are now looking at your completed violet tiered skirt. If you are also planning on adding the tulle overlay, we are now going to begin the construction of that. Now we are going to be making the optional skirt overlay. So taking our two tulle top tier circle skirt pieces, we are going to be placing those right sides together, aligning the raw edges. Then we are going to pin those together along those short raw side edges. Once pinned, we are now going to head to the sewing machine to use a regular straight stitch to now sew where we have pinned using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once we have now sewn those side seams, now attaching our two top tier circle skirt pieces together for our tulle overlay, we are now going to pop the top tier aside and now begin the construction of our bottom tier. So working on only two of our bottom tier tulle pieces to start off with, we are going to be placing those right sides together, aligning the raw edges 
and we are going to be pinning down just one side of the short raw side edges. Once pinned, we are now going to take one of those bottom tier pieces and fold it back on top of itself. So we are now looking at the right side of that tool and we have this unpinned end here. Now taking our third bottom tier piece, we are going to be placing that right sides together with that unsewn side edge and now align those side raw edges and pin those together. Then we are going to take that third bottom tier piece, fold it back on itself as well. So we are now looking at the right side of that with the unpinned end here. Then taking our fourth and final bottom tier piece, we can now place that right sides together, align those short raw ends and pin. Now taking the other end of our fourth bottom tier piece and our first bottom tier piece, we are now going to pop those together right sides together, aligning those short raw ends and pin those as well. So we have now created a continuous loop of tulle to create our bottom tier. Now we are going to head to the sewing machine to sew all four of those side seams, now using a regular straight stitch and a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you have then finished sewing all of your four bottom tier pieces together, we are now going to sew two rows of gathering stitches around the top raw edge of our bottom tier. So the first row of gathering stitches will be a quarter of an inch from the top raw edge. And then the second row will be three eighths of an inch away from that first initial row of gathering stitches. So I will go ahead now to sew my two rows of gathering stitches around the entire top raw edge of my bottom tier. Then we'll be back with the next steps. Once you have then sewn your two rows of gathering stitches around the entire top raw edge of your bottom tier, we are going to pop that aside. Now working back again with our top tier circle skirt, we are going to find the center front and the center back of each of the skirt pieces by simply folding our skirt in half so that we are matching side seam to side seam. And then now using an air eraser marker or a pin to mark our center front and center back of our top tier. Once we have now marked our center front and our center back, our two side seams will work as the other two quarter points. Now opening out our top tier so that we are looking at the right side of that, and now we are going to be working with our bottom tier as well. So using the side seams in our bottom tier, we will be aligning those with the quarter points that we have just created on our top tier. So making sure that we are placing our bottom tier and our right sides together with our top tier. I'm going to start by aligning one of the side seams on my bottom tier to a side seam on my top tier. Then moving across to my next side seam in my bottom tier, I will now be aligning that with my center front or center back mark on my top tier and pinning. Then moving to my next side seam on my bottom tier, I will then be aligning that with the next side seam on my top tier and pinning. Then taking my last side seam in my bottom tier and aligning that with either the opposite center front or center back and pinning. Now, just like before, before proceeding, you will want to make sure that you have not twisted that bottom tier at all when you have pinned it in those areas. And then we are going to gather our bottom tier to be the same circumference as our top tier. Once we have then gathered our bottom tier to be the same circumference as our top tier, we are now going to distribute those gathers evenly between those four quarter points and continue pinning our bottom tier to our top tier. Once you have then finished distributing those gathers evenly between those quarter points and you have pinned your bottom tier to your top tier, we are now going to head back to the sewing machine to attach our bottom tier to our top tier using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a regular straight stitch. 
once you have then attached your tulle overlay bottom tier to your top tier you can then go ahead and remove those gathering stitches then we are going to place our tulle overlay skirt over top of our tiered skirt so we are aligning the top raw edge of our tulle overlay to the top raw edge of our tiered skirt and we are also going to be aligning and pinning the side seams on both skirts. Then continue by just aligning the remainder of the two skirts together along those top raw edges and continue pinning the whole entire way around. Once you have then finished pinning your tulle overlay to your tiered skirt along those top raw edges, then we are going to head to our sewing machine to baste those together where we have pinned using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So to now attach our skirt to our bodices, we are going to take our skirt and turn it inside out. Then we are going to take our bodice and place it inside of our skirt so that the right sides of our fabric are now facing each other. So I have the right side of my bodice to the right side of my skirt. And if you have added the tulle overlay, you will now have that sandwiched in between. We are firstly going to start by aligning the side seams of our bodice to the side seams of our skirt and pin there first making sure to align the top raw edge of our skirt to the bottom raw edge of our bodice then repeat that for our second side seams then we are going to continue by simply pinning the remainder of our skirt to our bodice between those side seams making sure to align those raw edges at all times once we have then finished pinning our bodice to our skirt right sides together we are now going to head to our sewing machine to attach those together using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a stretch stitch once we have then attached our skirt to our bodice we are then going to finish off that raw edge with either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch once you have then finished attaching your skirt to your bodice and then you've also finished off that raw edge using either an overlocker or a zigzag stitch then we are now going to press that seam allowance up towards our bodice if you have added the optional tulle overlay you will want to be very careful at this stage when using your iron that you do not touch the tulle overlay at all so i'm going to go ahead now and press that seam allowance now up towards my bodice once you have then pressed that seam allowance up towards your bodice you are now looking at your completed violet dress congratulations on now completing your beautiful violet dress if you've enjoyed today's sew along, make sure to join our sew along group on Facebook where we actually host the sew alongs in real time and there are always amazing prizes to be won simply by participating. You can also join our main Peony Patterns Facebook group as well where you can then share any of your makes using patterns by Peony Patterns or ask any questions that you may have. I will link both of those groups in the description box of this video. Please make sure to also like and subscribe to our channel for future videos. Another huge thank you goes out to So Much Fabric for so generously sponsoring the Violet Sew Along. I hope that you have all enjoyed sewing along with me and I look forward to seeing you all again very soon for another sew along.